uh, welcome to Your Level Sucks 2, right here on Gatorbox. I'm your host, Draco, and this week's stream is going to be the, 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 the we're filming for the 10th collection uh, for this stream, even though I know uh, it was, uh, somebody, I think it was Bro Films, sent me a, a link to a another brand stage, this time from Target, Mario making a Target run, and of course he's going to get there on New Super Mario Brothers, but... It's only I haven't played the stage. I wrote the level code down. It's only one stage. It's not enough to like build into like a proper special episode. If there was like a, the target run stage, and then you know maybe some event courses. You know if if Nintendo uh, gave a shit about the game, then maybe we could play them in a pack and then get through it, and that would be like a thing. But <laughs> no. Wavecube's asking, is this a Space Jam shirt? It's actually not a Space Jam shirt, but I'm wearing it because, uh, let me move, as you can see the graphic. It has all the Looney Tunes characters and they're playing basketball, but they're not, they're not wearing like the Toon Squad jerseys, which is, I thought was weird, which is why I bought the shirt. It's because when you see Looney Tune characters and they're playing basketball, the only thing that you, that people default to is Space Jam. That is the only sports association that is made with Looney Tunes and yet this shirt, whoever printed it, licensed the Looney Tunes but they didn't go all the way, I guess to I guess maybe the movie studio has the license to Space Jam I I, pff, I don't know, but I feel like if, <laughs> if you're going to license the Looney Tunes and put them in a hypothetical basketball situation, and you don't also license the Space Jam, you know, likeness in the theme, in the jerseys. Why even fucking bother? What I like to do every week before we get into the game is I like to show off just what I just call cool stuff. I didn't really name the segment cool stuff, but because I always introduce the things as cool stuff, that's just been, that's what it's become. And it's something I do to kind of differentiate what I do from the other, the other Mario Maker streamers. I mean, I already know screaming at stages and calling the people who make them uh quote fucking idiots end quote i know that's already like enough but you know this is you know it's just something i do i i have a lot of junk i own a lot of junk i don't know if this tipped you off to it but i always find any excuse i can get to show off something interesting on stream and what i have today is well i'm trying to think what i've shown off already i know i showed off those uh pajamas I had when I was a kid. I think this one might be the, the thing I'm most sentimental about. And here it is. <laughs> it's... I know that this looks like is the fucking dowel rod with some notches cut in it because ultimately that's what it is. But this is actually a little replica of the Mario 3 warp whistle that my dad made for me and I've just I've had this my entire life like I mean this when Mario Super Mario Brothers 3 came out in the United States I was in I was in preschool and I remember playing that game I remember my my uncle owned a copy of that game and uh, he let me borrow it a couple of times and then since he had already beaten it uh, he just gave it to me, so I, that's how I got that game in my collection, and I thought that was fantastic, because when I was a kid, I didn't really like Super Mario Brothers 2 a whole lot, it was a too different, I've, I've come back around, and I can appreciate it for how unique it is, and what it's, it's given to the Mario universe, because it, like, really expanded everything that the universe has to offer, but Mario 3 was always my favorite one when I was a kid, because it had the most stuff, it had all the stages, it had the map, it had the secrets, it had all the power-ups, it had all the power-ups from the first game, and then it had the tail, and it had the thing that puts the Hammer Brothers to sleep, it had the fucking anchor, which, you know, I didn't hear about the anchor until I was in elementary school, and, you know, kids talking on the playground saying, did you find the anchor? And that was one of the few times any of those bullshit rumors ever came true. But, uh, because I played the game so much as a kid, and I knew how to get straight to World 8 from only beating a few stages in World 1. You duck behind the scenery in Stage 1-3, you get the first whistle, then you go to the fortress in World 1, and you fly up above uh, the roof, 
and you get the other whistle, then you use the first one, and before you pick the world you want to go to, you use the second whistle on the Warp Zone screen, and that takes you to World 8. Uh, everybody knows that trick. I don't know a single person on the planet who who beats the fortress in World 1 without just getting a fucking whistle because it's easier. Like, that Boom Boom is the only one in the history of the whole Mario world who's still alive today because nobody's gone in there and kicked him in the dick until he died. But, so, my dad took note of, of how much I played Super Mario Brothers 3, and he made me this goofy little whistle. It's not even a real whistle. Like, you can't, you can't blow in it. There's, it's, it's not a functional whistle. It's literally just... A little replica prop thing and you know for the longest time I played the Legend of Zelda eventually for NES I was kind of a late bloomer a late comer to the Legend of Zelda I actually played a link to the past first and then I doubled back to play the NES games when I you know figured out oh well this is not the first one in the series it's actually on the Nintendo I think I got it at, like a garage sale or something so I played through that and then I was like oh shit that's the fucking Mario whistle and then I later learned that the, the warp whistle in Mario 3, it, it, it didn't originate in Mario 3. It's actually a reference to the whistle from Zelda. So it's a cameo. I, this whole time, I mean, not this whole time, but for that period of my life, I just assumed the whistle was a Mario thing. And then, or maybe it was just common enough that Nintendo put it in multiple games, whatever it was. But I saw it in Mario first, so naturally, I just assumed, well, it's just like the mushroom, it's just like the fire flower, it's just, it's, it's just a Mario thing. I didn't even realize that this was put in the game as kind of a callback to one of Nintendo's older games, uh, where you, you play the whistle at the, uh, the fountain in the overworld, and... That either, that either summons a fairy, or it opens up one of the dungeons, or both. Maybe there's two lakes and you blow it twice, I don't know. But in, in Zelda, it, uh, it actually makes the same sound it makes when you use it in Mario. The same little jingle, the doo-doo-doo-doo-doo, and like that. Except the tornado doesn't come pick you up in Zelda. That's just the, that's the little, uh, little twist that they added in, in Mario 3. I mean, this is something that I've, I've probably had for coming up on 30 years. It's not as spectacular as uh, the little handheld games we looked at last week. It's not, or not last week, a couple weeks ago. It's not as interesting, maybe, as the, the, the new Coke that we, that we did last week where I tied it in because it was 1985 and that's when Mario was released. You know, it's, it really is just a piece of wood, and I am the only person on the planet that this has any value whatsoever to, but you know, it's it's like 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 I've said before. I don't know if I've said it on this on this show. In fact, I think I did. Is when we were looking at the pajamas. It's it's weird, the things that stick around in your life because it's really easy to lose shit. I mean, like I said, you know, half this house got blown down after Hurricane Harvey. You know, that was the garage and everything in it, it was basically toast. My parents' garage got damaged and stuff in there got had to be thrown away. So, after all these weird life events and purges, whether willing or unwilling, that happen, sometimes the, the weirdest things kick around, and this little, this little dowel rod, this little five-inch piece of dowel rod, it was a lot bigger when I was a kid, because, you know, my hand was, like, this fucking tiny, so I'm like, wow, it's a big-ass whistle. <laughs> so... This is something, I don't know, the only reason this isn't on the shelf behind me is because I actually keep this at my desk where I, I work in, in the other room whenever I'm editing videos, so this, this came off of in there, and I don't, it, means, it means more to me being in there than just being on the, the shelves behind me. But I figure, this is, a, this, this is a, a personal cool thing, it's not an official Nintendo product, it's not some weird tie-in that I'm going to use to drink a can of New Coke on stream and tell you that New Coke doesn't taste that bad. But, you know, it's something from my childhood. And that's really kind of what parts of this show are about. I know we get into the offensive, you know, no-no words and, and language and stuff like that. And we kind of, you know, get into goofy shit like that. But when it comes down to, I'm, I'm just some normal-ass dude. And this is the type of shit that's really important to me. This stupid whistle that doesn't even work as a, as a whistle because it's just a dowel rod. Like... I think it's time to play some bad stages. So, 
Uh, I got the Mario hat ready. It's time to let's -a go. It's a me, a Draco. It's weird that that kind of works that accent. Okay, we got to move these around. Got to turn on the AC because it's about to get hot in here. <laughs> I actually didn't put the Kickstarter pen anywhere clever this week because I was, I was stressing out over this goddamn stream. I'm so far behind. I didn't even make a proper entry on my my notepad for keeping track of stages. So let me. Uh... Wilbo's Wilbo's craziness by Bill Bob's. What the fuck are these fucking names? What is this straight out of Alabama? Wilbo. That's like that's like that's like somebody on Jeopardy forgetting forgetting the name like Wilbur Wright. It's like oh he's the guy that fucking built the first plane and flew it at Kitty Hawk. What was his name? Wilbo. Is there a cat suit here? Look at that. I love being right. You can read these fucking stages like a book. My whole life is suffering, and it's your fault. Oh, she's too far away for me to hit. Ah! Wait, did Pom Pom, like, not... Oh, this is an infinite spawning cat suit thing. I don't even know what I'm worried about. I thought there was just... I, I, I didn't even see the yellow pipe. It, like, blended into the thing. I guess, you know what I should have checked? I, well, I, I think I went down a pipe, so it wouldn't matter. I just got a fireball, too. I was gonna see if these doors were optional, and I kinda... I'm kinda losing my edge, but it doesn't matter, because this takes us straight to the flagpole. <laughs> Fandramon, that was the infinite fire flower, only it was the cat suit. Twist! If I went to the right, there was an infinite fire flower, too. It was the infinite... Choose your own adventure, right? This is one of those bullshit things. Do you take the red pill or the blue pill? <laughs> Speaking of the Matrix, uh, Neil, Neil C. Serega, the guy who he does a lot of goofy music, Ultimate Showdown, the same guy... Uh, he has he posts you know goofy jokes every once in a while on 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 Twitter and he did this thing where he talked about the uh, uh, the the edited the edited down theatrical release of the Matrix and he said if you put it in in ultra wide screen you can <laughs> whenever Morpheus offers Neo the red or blue pill you can see his other hands which offer him a cigarette and a Rolo or something stupid like that <laughs> Bow <laughs> Bowers Castle. <laughs> It's a different guy. <laughs> uh, I'm here to fight Bauer. Is this? Oh, great! It even spawns the same, the same items. At least they give me a pow block here. Doesn't this do more damage to Bowser? Maybe it doesn't. I have no idea. Well, I killed him in four hits, so. I didn't even need to kill him. I could have just gone straight past him and gone to the flag. It's not even... No, it's not a clear condition. God damn it. See, I'm, I'm so used to these stupid stages where people are like, Oh, get to the stage after killing all one Bowser. Or, that's not the clear condition, but there's a fucking door that's locked and you... So you have to kill him because, sure enough, he's the guy that's got the key. Who else are you going to give it to in the stage? So I, it's just, I see Bowser, and I just pelt him with blocks until he's dead. And sometimes I forget that there are people out there who just don't even think to block the exit and make you fight him. Bowers. Boom, boom, hour. Tell you what, no one gonna dang on the capture the print and take him to catch him and go around and around and lava, man. Me, me, Wowser. Son of a bitch. Have we gotten any, like, no, we've, we've only got 3D Mario World stages. Fuck you. You can't get over the POW block? What are you, stupid? No power-ups. No nothing. 
Which is fine. I mean, I didn't have any trouble with that, but... Let me check this out. Here's a, here's a top tip. Oh, there it is! <laughs> I mean, could I have jumped from the little the elbow bend in the pipe up there and just, and just done that while running? Yes. Would it have been as cool? No. <laughs> you twitch. Me, Wowzer. It's like every week we get a fucking don't move stage. Reach the goal as Builder Mario? Why don't you reach the goal as in, with your own dick up your own ass? Okay? <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Builder Mario is, is like if Mario got cancer. I hate this. Where's... I assume it's, it's going to give me Builder Mario at one point. Yeah, I see it up there. So... We're gonna hit the next teleporter, and that's gonna give me Builder Mario. And we're gonna we're gonna beat no. I don't fucking know. Where am I getting all these keys? I have not been paying attention. He gave he gave me he gave me six one ups, which is like almost a reasonable use of the one up power up. <laughs> it's just twice as much. <laughs> What a great, what a great stage! I guess we get one of them a week. That's our don't move quota for the week. Here's my advice to you, Ivan: Don't make Super Mario Don't Two Star by Tater Tater Two <laughs> Bogder Todd. Yeah, those are stars, all right, aren't they? Merry Christmas! It's red and green. And it's full of shit. <laughs> Guess he got tired of the big Koopa Troopas, or maybe the game told me to put too many. How? Okay, we're done. It's gonna be like, how long does this go on for? I mean, I know, I know, Mario 3D World is uh is garbage, but I was like, did it, did it just uh, did did Nintendo release an update that's like, hey, uh, we haven't touched this game since it came out, but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make the the level length limit, we're gonna quadruple that for no particular reason. Nintendo released one patch for the game a couple days into its release. And on the title screen, if I if I go all the way back to it, it still just says version 1.0.1. They haven't fucking touched it since a few days after release. I don't believe that. So it's, it's a fucking Mario game on a major Nintendo console. Like what are you doing? What what could you possibly be working on? What fucking Splatoon three? Like, <laughs> you're running out of games to port to the Switch from the Wii U because no one bought that piece of shit. Yeah, there we go. That just looks like a spam title. For, I mean, I can't read Japanese, but every time we see a level code like that or a, a, a level title, like Fangemon or somebody else who can read Japanese, will just be like, "Oh, that just says the letter A a bunch of times." Like, okay, that makes sense. I believe that. Oh, I ain't getting that. You can go fuck yourself with that hammer. Check this out. Oh, work smarter, not harder. Now watch there be like a fucking wall. <laughs> well, I got the cat suit, I guess. <laughs> I called that. Somebody answer that phone, because I called it. There's like nothing in this stage. It's oh, fuck off, Mario. Let's we'll kick off this wall, and when we get up there, he goes this way. See? It's all about spatial reasoning and thinking, which the person who made this stage doesn't have. I forgot he can crawl in this one. These? How are they getting closer to me? How? How'd you? Oh, god damn it! It's like, how'd you get these guys to move, like, laterally? They just move up and down. Yeah, I noticed you put all these power-ups here, because not even you could get up to this fucking part without screwing it up. Oh, okay, I do have to hit that, because that opened the doors right there. Yeah, okay. Got me right in the dick? Fine. I'll go right a big dick, all the way down to the base. There you go. Great stage design 101. Run and jump with the music. But 
is it supposed to be this music? I think it was, and now like I'm off the beat of the song, so I. <laughs> also, how did this? How is this easy? Are, are, is this supposed to be a cross? Like like real talk. Didn't we play a stage on one of the stream, like the first streams that said like Jesus loves you, or something something like that? <laughs> Oh, hallelujah, it's raining men. Whee. Yeah, it's it's like it's like after you beat a boss in, in Mario 3, except it never ends. I mean that wasn't too bad, I guess. And then you get you get the three ups because Jesus resurrected on the third day, or after three days, so that means he resurrected on the fourth day, or God made the earth on in six days, and on the seventh he was like, "Yo, man, I'm bushed. I'm done. I'm done. I'm taking. Fuck it. I'm calling in tomorrow. Don't somebody take a message for me or whatever it is." <laughs> test. Is are, are you testing me or is this test because it's a it's a level upload test? I'm guessing it's the latter. Hang on, buddy. Give me your ride. You never know. You never know when you might need a shell. Nope. Okay. Turns out we didn't need a shell. Turns out <laughs> just a bad stage. I think it's kind of funny that they don't show you the current world record for a stage like before you play it because then you would be able to know if like you look at the stage and the world record time is six seconds, you would know that there's like there's nothing there and you can just hold right and win. You could okay. Now I know from based upon what's going on the stage over here on the left, I know that you know how to put them in the pipes. So how do you explain that shit going on on the right over there? What's what's what, what's your excuse for that? Other than you just suck at the game. U Uber flutung. I don't know what that means, but it's German, so it's uber uber floating, uber bullshit. I just saw that the person who made it, his name is Tobias. Oh hey, I'm Tobias. Oh hey guys, I'm Tobias. That's like a, that's like such a stupidly specific reference that like nobody's gonna get it. Oh hi. I think I'm supposed to go here and, and, and wall kick. <laughs> Fucking hell. I'm making myself laugh with my own stupid, crappy referential humor, so... I mean, this is, this is just a level you just go up. That's all it is. We're just climbing to the top. I feel like this would have been better if there was if you did like the poison water and had it go up and follow me I feel like I, I we're on the forest stage so I feel like if you set it to night it would have turned into poison but I feel like what ended up happening is that this dude designed this stage and he did originally have it with the water that was gonna come up and get you but then he realized it was probably too hard and he couldn't beat it so he was like okay well here's what we're gonna do I've already built this stage so we're just gonna drain the swamp and we're gonna get we're gonna nix the poison. In fact, I'm just gonna turn night mode off. We're gonna go back to we're gonna go back to day man. And we're just gonna keep the water at the bottom so you can't just swim to the top. Like there's every every once in a while we play a stage where you can clearly see in real time the compromises that the person making it made just so that they can still submit their stage. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. Good job, Uber Flubber. Whatever, it, I don't even know what it's called. You guys remember that movie, Flubber, with Robin Williams? I mean, I know you guys know what... You guys know what Flubber is. I mean, it's not... It's not a new concept. I mean, that movie fucking came out and was a, a big deal for a while. What the fuck even was that movie? Like, it, it had... It had the bad guy from Happy Gilmore who eats Flubber and, it, like, he blows out his ass at the end of the movie and, like, that's how he gets defeated. That's how they defeat the bad guy in that movie. He eats Flubber, and he shits it out. <laughs> if you think I'm fucking with you, why don't you go see if it's on Disney Plus and go watch it, okay? 
<laughs> Do I remember Son of Flubber? I didn't even know that was a thing. I honestly, I honestly don't know. I just know that I just know that I think Flubber was a remake of like a nineteen, an old Disney nineteen fifties or sixties movie called like The Absent Minded Professor or something. <laughs> Demonic Boy, that's getting into some very niche deviant art territory. It was a Disney movie. It was in a Disney movie. That scene was put on the silver screen in theaters. It had a theatrical release where you could see Christopher McDonald. That's that guy, that's that actor's name. You could see Christopher McDonald at the end of the movie accidentally eat Flubber. And then he dances and he shits it out and he blows the seat out of his pants. That's how the movie ends. I remember nothing else about the movie except for that. And then whenever he puts the, uh, he, he paints the, uh, the the compound on the bottoms on the thumbtacks and puts them on the basketball player's shoes so they jump high. Those are the only two parts of that movie that I remember. <laughs> Dr. Surgeon Guy Flubber was terrifying. It also falls into that era of CG, like that mid nineties CG where it 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 just it wasn't there. Like you could make Jurassic Park also existed in the middle of the nineties, but that movie cost literally like five trillion dollars to make. And that's the reason why the effects still look good today, and, like, Jurassic World looks like shit. But Flubber was, like, one of those movies where the CG was just bad, and you could tell it was bad. And they only had a few animation routines for the little guy, the little Flubber alien guy, and that's it, and they, like, recycled it. It's kind of like the dancing baby from Ally McBeal, like, where it, it, the baby just does, like, the this, and it turns around, and then goes like that and it, it has two whole dance moves it's it's kind of the same thing <laughs> also wave cube yeah we are talking about flubber <laughs> you leave for a bit you come back and we talk about flubber it wasn't quite sega cd style cg but it, it was just like it just didn't look good it looked cheap and it hasn't aged well i'm sure it looked better like at the time, because we didn't we didn't know any better, <laughs> Mr. Flamble. Why can't we talk about a real Disney classic like Inspector Gadget, with the one the one with Matthew Broderick or the one with French Stewart? <laughs> I feel so bad for French Stewart, right? Like I don't even know what happened to that dude, but I only I mean I know he was in Third Rock from the Sun. He basically played like a Sheldon type character who's really socially awkward, and he always kind of. He always, kind of, he always kind of looks like this whenever he talks and he tries to... It, that's You know, that's the fucking way he looks. He looks like he's always staring into the sun. And I, I recognized him as uh, the, the actor who appeared in sequels to movies where they could not get the original actors. Like, French Stewart was in Inspector Gadget 2, and he was one of the bad guys in one of the Home Alone movies, I th like, the not Macaulay Culkin Home Alone movies. I'm pretty sure, like, that... <laughs> I'm pretty sure his entire acting career, post Third Rock from the Sun, was just getting sloppy seconds from, like, movie studios just trying to make, a like, a crappy cash-in movie. He could not have been paid more than 50 bucks to be in the Home Alone movie. Like... <laughs> He was like, his, his agent was like, French, I got you, I got you a great deal, all right? Get this, they're going to pay you 50 bucks to be in the new Home Alone picture. Your name, Home Alone, remember? Ah, oh, that's going to be you. But this time, you do have access to the catered lunches, so you're going to get paid, and you're also going to get a free lunch when you're on set every time. How does that sound, French? How does that sound? Let's make it happen. <laughs> then French Stewart goes, I think it sounds good. Thanks for looking out for me. <laughs> this is what my fucking show is. All right, L L M, and then L M I N I M L M I N I M A L L Mini Mall, Mini Mall. That's the flea market Montgomery remix of that song. What the hell even? <laughs> I guess that's what I get for that. I mean, it has the fucking spot shadow. I can't see what I'm doing. So, obviously, this stage is like... You, you just have to shoot the balls in there. Oh, I guess we got them. Because that... We get the key for... Yeah. And we're done. Well, that was... 
That was shitty. Also, I feel like with the way the flagpole lights up like that... <laughs> Hang on. Let me... What was that? It was like L-L-M-N-N-M. Okay. Let me... Let me let me let me see something real quick. Let's let's go. Let's hop into course bot real quick. I gotta I gotta I gotta see I gotta see something. Does this does, is this the one? No, this doesn't have the spot shadow. It's the ghost house that has the spot shadow, right? Okay. So here's what we're gonna do. Where's the end? There's the end. All right. We're gonna pick this up. We're gonna drag it over this way. Let's get let's get one of those. Where the hell even are those? Ender Gizmos? <laughs> Look at what Nintendo let me do in their game. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> it took us this long to figure out that we could do this. It's not- it's a rocket ship, by the way. It's a rocket ship, okay? I'm a big fan of science. <laughs> I wonder... <laughs> Are you... <laughs> I really- I honestly, I- if I didn't hate the spot shadow thing so much, uh, I would find a way to, like, sneak this into a level design. And just at the end, and just- just because. <laughs> What even, what even are these things? Like, that's... Th those symbols aren't even Japanese. That's, those are just like... Japanese is like the weirdest language because it, like, part of its character set just includes like... Is this lagging my game? I feel like it actually is killing the frame rate of this game. Holy shit. Anyways, I feel like Japanese is like that language that just... It, they have like decorative things in the font set just because. Like, what does the little X with the dots mean around it? It's not a punctuation mark. We don't have that in English. The closest thing we got is an interrobang, and that's that's not even officially adopted. Like, what is this? What, are you playing cards or something? Those look like Mahjong tiles. That would be like if the English language included the mana symbols from Magic the Gathering as, as part of the language. I don't even know what that is. 1-1 one, one, Modern Mashup. You think the guy that made this stage likes Splatoon? Don't know what tipped me off to it, I just had an idea. This is the 1-1 mashup, okay? It's gonna be everything you know about 1-1. Like, look at this. You ever seen a nipple drawn in coins in 1-1? Guess what? Now you have. It's all, it's all about the remix, okay? You know, life is, life is remix culture. Okay? And I'm gonna hit that, because look at that. I almost got that to line up. If I gave a shit, I could've made it look nice. Kind of like, unlike the person that made the stage. <laughs> Dr. Surgeon Guy is asking, already asking, uh, how is this a remix? Uh, spoiler alert, I don't, I don't think it is. I think we've been had. I mean, I'll be honest with you, I'm not familiar with uh, stage 1-1 one, one of, of New Super Mario Brothers, but this could be a remix of that. When, whenever you say 1-1 one, one to me, in the context of... Super Mario Brothers, I, everyone, everyone thinks of the NES game. Even people who have never even seen Mario. They they know that level, and that's what they think of. So I don't I don't know what this is. Also, why why would you call it New Super Mario Brothers? That's like the worst name to give something. Because guess what? The game came out like 13 fucking years ago, so you know what it is now? It's old Super Mario Brothers. So good job, Nintendo. I mean, that's like, what if they what if they called the Super NES, what if they called it the new Nintendo Entertainment System, right? The thing's been out 30 years almost now. Like, who's, what are you going to do about it now? It, it, it's not new anymore. Like, new kids on the block, those motherfuckers are all grown up now. Should be grown-ass men still in a boy band. It should be the name of that band. Good job. Protect yourself. Oh, we've got a Second Amendment stage. That's great. <laughs> I guess I was close. We got we got fireball Yoshi. We have our Yoshi quota for the for the the stage. 
they even gave us the red Yoshi. I mean, I know why they did that. It's because it's the one that spits fire. Look, he, he, can, he can dance. He's adorable. He can also almost fall out of the stage. <laughs> it's very slow moving because this is the... Hey! Hey! You son of a bitch! That was my friend! I was supposed to... I failed. It was all about protection. And he got away. I didn't protect myself. No, I protected myself just fine. I didn't protect Yoshi. That's where I fucked up. Now I feel bad. This level's got a lot of ups and downs. Mostly downs. So now I'm depressed. Oh, hang on. It's gonna happen. This is it. This is it. This is it. Oh, this is my moment. This is my moment. Okay, we're out of here. <laughs> Fuck all y'all. <laughs> Quit following me. Oh, okay. Look, there's my. Hey, look, he's back. He's he's fine. See, Yoshi. Yoshi's never die. They just respawn. Here we go. And also, they gave us this, and so now we don't have to ride that stupid thing anymore. This is a really long stage for being in easy mode, and I don't really know why it's here. I mean, I guess it's because objectively it's easy, but this this seems like the kind of level that would get recategorized as normal. Because it falls into that weird threshold of like, you know somebody's just gonna miss a one jump and they're gonna be like, oh, I'm gonna play this, I'm gonna hit skip. And all that idiots like that do to this game is that's how levels get bumped out of easy and into normal. But not expert, because right, this isn't this isn't hard. It's just tedious. It's just a long game. I ain't gonna do that. You you gave me the ability to fucking break the walls. Why the fuck am I gonna fight Bowser, you idiot? But yeah, th this is this type of stage that you would see in normal mode. It takes longer to beat, and because of it, I, I think I talked about this uh, in a previous stream. It surpasses the attention span of the average player. It took me two and a half minutes to beat that. World records, one and a half minutes when someone's not telling jokes. So, you know, it's still 90 seconds is a pretty significant amount of time to beat a Mario level. Nani? Oh, great. Well, <laughs> turning off the stage sensor kind of fucked me there, I guess. That's okay. Oh, no. Alright, I was gonna say, I don't need your power ups anyways. I'm a real man. I'll play. I'll beat the stage like a man, man. But since you're gonna rain five thousand stars on top of me at the end of the stage, I guess I'll take one. And you got free samples. It's like when you go to Sam's and the lady at the frozen section who always seems to be there. She always has bagel bites or pizza rolls. She's like, "Would you like to try a bagel bite?" And I'm like, <laughs> "Fucking yeah, I would." <laughs> Do that, you know. Then you go down and then you buy a you buy a pretzel from the Sam's Deli for. Like, 89 cents. I don't know how they stay in business. I guess it's because they're Walmart. And I guess a pretzel, objectively, is pretty cheap. It's just bread and salt, but... Still, that's a, that's a, that's a good day to me. When I was a kid, that was, like, my favorite thing to do. Is, like, whenever I'd be... Like, when my parents would drag me out to the store and I wouldn't want to go, I'd at least be like, okay, well, maybe there's going to be somebody giving out free samples of anything. It didn't even matter what it was. I would go try it. Like, what do you got? A sample, a little, a little ketchup cup full of prune juice? Fine, I'll take a shot of that. Let's let me have something. The, the only thing I wouldn't be able to get free samples of would be, like, wine. Whenever they do those at, like, the, you know, every once in a while. But it didn't matter what it was. It's like, what do you got? Granola? Let me try a bite. <laughs> What's that, tuna salad? Let me try a bite. <laughs> what is that, guacamole? Let me try a bite. <laughs> Frosted mini wheats? You put three of them in a cup? <laughs> sure, I'll try that. <laughs> like these days, it's like I don't even want free samples. I just like it. It just fucking makes me anxious. I just I go out of my way to avoid the free sample people when I'm at the store now. They don't they don't even give you bagel bites anymore, anyways. Nobody cares. God strict down met king boo. I don't know what that's supposed to be. The only word in this title that I understand is stridged. Okay, well, we're just gonna get off the Wiggler. I feel like I think I know what they're trying to get me to do. 
but I'm not gonna do it. They want me to bounce on Wiggler through all this crap. Oh, that's good. So, yeah, okay. That's what I was gonna say. I was gonna say one of these guys has a key or something. And of course it was the... It was the, uh... King Boo, which is referenced in the title. There was another door somewhere. There was like a designer door. Do you see that shit? Ain't that the ain't that the worst? Isn't that the fucking worst? Whenever like, you couldn't even do that, like you felt you felt the need to put a second a hidden secondary door in a stage where all you have to do is grab a star and kill a ghost. And you felt the need to put a secondary door, like a fucking back exit in the stage. This it took me 30 seconds to beat it. You don't you can't you can't fucking be good at Mario for half a minute to just do that. B bully time by Cool Cat. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. He fights bullies. You you can't do that. You can't do that. He's the kid's superhero. He's against bullying. In all its forms. He's also against bringing guns to school or whatever the hell the other Cool Cat movie is that doesn't exist yet. And that's it. And that's the end of the stage. I'm Cool Cat, and I love all kids! They're gonna paint on someone's wall, and it's not cool to paint on someone's wall! In the past, I've, uh... I've described the impression of, of Cool Cat's voice as like doing an impression of Spyro the Dragon, the original Spyro the Dragon, but not giving a shit. That's that's the cool cat voice. Here's a here's a, a little bit of Yoshi trivia for you, since we're playing this stage. Did you know that Yoshi is shaped like a friend? And I just oh you fucked me, boom boom, you piece of shit. Get the hell out of here. Yoshi also teaches us important lessons about life and death. Water too. <laughs> what we got the sequel to Water? <laughs> Holy shit! We're living in the future! <laughs> I'm gonna grab that. I mean, I get... I could grab the builder suit, actually, as much as I hate it and go in that door, but I... Okay. Oh, shit. Water 2 came at a cost. Water 2 sounds like some shit from, like, Demolition Man. <laughs> Why are these doors even here? <laughs> they don't go anywhere. You know what? I wonder... Man! I didn't see the other door from that house. So if we picked up... Man, if we picked up Builder Mario and went in that door, there's no telling where that would have put us. It probably would have put us up on the spikes because the guy just dragged the other door out of the way, not thinking that somebody would pick up the Builder Suit and just smash the walls to get to the door. I'm pretty sure you can break ice, ice blocks, with the Builder Mario Suit. If not, you could just break the ones on top of it and get down there, but... Now, now I wonder what would have happened if we went in that door. Water World without the world because everything died. Speaking of Water World, man... I tell you what, that movie was a load of shit, but it, it, put, it put Universal Studios in a really interesting predicament because at their theme park Universal at the Universal theme park they have the Waterworld stunt spectacular where like the if you haven't seen it I mean I, I don't think it matters to spoil it it's like 25 fucking years old but you sit there and there's guys that fight and they have the the prop guns with the caps and the smoke and shit like that and then there's a big plane that fl comes through the back at the end and crashes into the water and blows up and catches fire and stuff like that. It's really cool. It's a really good show. But unfortunately, the movie is not good at all. It's a it's a shitty movie. It's bad. So it like but the stunt show is good and it's been at the Universal theme parks ever since. So Universal has to like pretend to give a shit about the Waterworld movie 
because otherwise, like, what's the stunt show? If it's just a random stunt show, it has to be Waterworld. The whole thing is themed after scenes in the movie, or it's it's inspired by the story of the movie. So y you can't just rebrand it. Like, what are you gonna do with all that? You're gonna fucking I don't know what you would call it. <laughs> Stupid pirates? Like, what would it what would it be? So it's it put them in a weird predicament where they have to pretend that they give a shit about Waterworld. It's actually it's actually pretty funny. Hey, it's an automatic stage, and we gotta grab 213 coins, which I guess will it will do that for me automatically. Because we live in the future, right? And the epitome of being in the future is that everything is all automated. I don't know how George Jetson still has a job, because I feel like whatever it is he's doing, fucking Rosie could do, right? Just get a better robot. Motherfucker's got a treadmill for his dog. Done. <laughs> what a waste of time. So, I was talking with uh, Dr. Ocelot, who does the graphic design for this stream. And uh, I, I, I'm not really well read with a lot of the tertiary Super Mario games. Especially the ones on the Game Boy Advance. So, I didn't know that like the Mario and Luigi saga, whatever. I didn't know that Bowser's Inside Story was an actual game until recently. And, uh, Dr. Ocelot knew that. I guess we had a previous conversation where I was like, I don't know anything about any of these games. So he sent me some screenshots from the game and didn't tell me what they were from. And it was all about Bowser being fed until he just got really fat. And I'm like, is this from, like, a really fucked up gross fan game or something that, like, someone posted on Game Joel just because? It's like the deviant art of video games. And, uh... He played along at first, but then he was like, no, that's an actual Nintendo game. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. That's not a thing. Nintendo didn't make that. That's weird. But sure enough, they did. And Bowser's inside story is, is, is a real thing. There we go. I feel like I need to, like... This game could be teaching me Japanese if I really just paid attention. What does that mean? Maybe, that, maybe the name of that stage said water. Maybe the name of that stage said nothing. Like, this, nothing in Japanese. Really? What, am I a fucking Olympic swimmer now? Like... <laughs> See, this is, this is even like... Is this... Okay. Here's a Dr. Surgeon guy, this is Water 3! <laughs> that's, that's a good joke. I wish I thought of that one. Shell Dash. By Wow Wow Wow. Wah 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 wah! Was was that a Borat thing? Very nice. Oh fuck! No! <laughs> That's what I get for doing Borat impressions in 2019. <laughs> and we're done. We're done. That's it. High five! I took my dad to see that movie in 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 theaters, and I think that was like in recent memory. I think that was the hardest I'd ever seen him laugh. Like, that I can remember. Like, even to this day, like, that would have been, like, 13 or 14 years ago when that movie came out. It's still, that was the hardest I think I've ever seen him laugh. <laughs> Bruno was just a worse Zoolander. Zoolander actually had a, had a plot, though. And, and was funny. Zoolander was genuinely hilarious. Like, parts of that movie still make me laugh today. Like, genuinely. Like, fucking Owen Wilson. The files are in the computer and then like he he rapples down from the ceiling and he's making his big entrance and he's gonna blow the whole thing wide open because he's retrieved the files and he says that guy brainwashed zoolander to kill the claymation dude i got the files right here and he has the fucking imac with him the whole fucking computer and he throws it at the ground and blows it up because he thinks the files are in the computer because he's stupid like that is genius that's that's fucking hilarious that's like a i mean i look at zoolander the way i look at the comedy and like dumb and dumber where it's so it is so stupid but it's written and executed so well that to this day i will laugh my ass off at it even though i've seen the movie a dozen times like where he says don't be distracted by the beautiful celebrities while he's getting brainwashed 
and as Zoolander's walking, he sees like he sees like Fred Durst from Limp Biscuit and stuff like that. And then fucking Gary Shandling is, is like standing there going like like that. The goofiest looking motherfucker on the planet. God, God rest his soul. Like it's it's stuff like that. That is just that's what that's what makes the movie for me. That's what makes the movie for me. Oh, Tabitha, you you hate Ben Stiller movies. Not all of them are good, right? Not like Meet the Parents is like okay. It's kind of funny, but all the ones that came after it, Meet the Fockers and Little Fockers or whatever, I didn't like those. I wasn't really sold on like Duplex. I mean, that wasn't that was a Duplex. The idea behind it is hilarious if you haven't seen it it's about this couple that's renting a duplex and their neighbor who is the super of the duplex is this fucking mean old woman and they just conspire to kill her and make it look like an accident that's the whole movie because they're bad people that's hilarious to me but the movie is kind of like i don't know because ben stiller he's it's real he's real he's real wishy-washy He's like Nicolas Cage in that regard, but I don't know. I think the Ben Stiller show from the 90s, if you haven't seen that, that's amazing, okay? There's moments in the Ben, like, the Ben Stiller show was all of these uh, comedians that were popular in the 90s. Ben Stiller, uh, Bob Odenkirk, Andy Dick, Janine Garofalo, they're all on this show together. So if you like comedians from that era, you'll fucking love the Ben Stiller show. My favorite sketch from that show is counting with Bruce Springsteen where Ben Stiller is dressed up like the boss and he goes one two three four five six, five, six. <laughs> and the number just keeps counting up as he's doing it like shit like that <laughs> if you get like for every five things that don't make you laugh in that show, one of them will make you piss yourself laughing. I guarantee it. Joshi, Joshi's Island. Jo Joshi's here. I didn't censor the coat. <laughs> Joshi's competing. Mario. I got my own cot racing. <laughs> we got two Joshis. This is his place. This is his island. Is <laughs> Mario? It can stop on a dime, Mario. This is better than Brooklyn. <laughs> we got more Joshis. Holy shit! There's a lot of them. A lot of, a lot of Joshis. There we go. <laughs> oh, that's 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 German. That's German for Yoshi. This, this whole time, I thought there was a vine sauce thing. Damn. Oh, damn. This ain't even, ain't even any fucking water here. What are you calling this damn for? You're damn stupid. Yoshi, please. We have ourselves a problem here. <laughs> Like you know what a damn is, right? Oh come, come on! No, it's it's falling apart. He killed Yoshi. That son of a bitch. That's okay. We got another Yoshi. He's not he's not the red Yoshi. Fuck off, Kamek. Oh god, I'm just it's all going pear shaped. We're gonna save him. Don't worry. How the hell did I pull that off? Jumping through a shitty stage like this is one of the most nerve-wracking experiences. Because you know the person that made this level it is just, it, like, failed first grade. You know what? No, I'm not gonna hit that. I don't need to. I'm, 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 I'm a manly man. The end of the level's gonna be right here anyways. What the hell? You got, you got a son indoors? How'd you do that? Oh, no, Yoshi, come here! It's okay. Got him. Saved him. Saved him. I think that was an egg cannon. And <laughs> shot out Yoshi eggs. Also, yeah, that was, yeah, finally some Mario World. Uh, I 
want to thank everyone for coming out. I had a great time, so thank y'all for the support and for the resubs, of course. Uh, thank you for swinging by and hanging out with me tonight. Appreciate it. Uh, I do appreciate y'all's support, and uh, it, you know, just it helps keep me sane. As you guys, you guys know, I deal with a lot of bullshit in my personal life, so being able just to come hang out here and put on a good show really takes my mind off of things when I when I need it most. So you guys are you guys are like my uh, second family, I guess. Super Yoshi enjoyed the literally nothing for 23 cola taps. <laughs> Don't spend it all in one place. Um, but yeah, uh, thanks again for coming out to the stream. This has been Your Level Sucks. If you enjoy the if you enjoy the show, well, that's good. What, you think I was going to tell you to subscribe and click the bell? I ain't going to do that shit. But I just said it, so now you kind of played myself on that one, didn't I? Really kind of got me. I'm an idiot. But <laughs> anyways, I'm going to roll the credits. 